to another episode of the Adobe Creative Educator live stream show. I'm so thrilled to be here this afternoon. My name is Tanya Averith and I work on the education and community team here at Adobe. If you are joining, uh, please, please, please share in the chat where you're joining from, where you are in the world. We're so thrilled to have you. I'm super excited to have a really special co-host guest today. Um, Emily, uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Awesome. Hey, everybody. I'm Emily Chesbro. I'm also on the Adobe for Education team. Uh, I work on product marketing for K-12 education, and I'm super excited to be here with you, Tanya. I love the live stream show. Well, I'm super excited to have you. Emily is like a super duper rock star. I don't know what I would do without her. She is amazing. And I'm so thrilled that she has agreed to join us uh, this afternoon. So Emily, we have a really awesome guest. We I'm do. freaking out because I literally stalked him uh, all afternoon and watched way too many of his videos. So uh, I'm just going to pop him on and uh, we're going to get him to to share a little bit about himself. Hello, hello. Oh, hi. I was just drinking my vodka. I mean, my water, <laughs> my, my teacher water, my special adult teacher water. I love that. Oh my gosh. Somewhere. I've got my very special teacher diet coke. Yes. Yes. It's not quite the same. <laughs> yes, yes. It's a party here on a Thursday, isn't it? <laughs> well, we're so thrilled to have you here. Um, for those of you who are joining today, uh, who might not know who you are, for those of them, please tell us a little bit about you. Who are you, Joe? Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm Joe. Mr. D. Dombrowski, as um, the children are calling me these days. Uh, I am a teacher and I'm also a uh, stand up comedian uh, with an exceptionally large internet following. <laughs> so I guess that I could add on to the list content creator. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. I I kind of have to admit, like I mentioned as I was introducing you, I started I started with like your your one video, which we'll talk about in a moment. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the next. And then I went to the next. And then before you knew it, I was like, oh my God, I really don't have time to be doing this right now. But I was dying. Yes. Like every video got funnier and funnier, funnier. And like so so for those of you who don't know Joe, Joe has well, I mean, you're all on this the interwebs, on the social medias, and we'll talk about how we can follow you and find you. But I started off with your YouTube channel and just about died. So he is seriously funny. And uh, Joe, you also teach like full time, right? I do. I'm a full time kindergarten teacher, which let me tell you something about that. Um, it takes a very specific type of psychotic to want to teach kindergarten. I am that type of psychotic. And on top of that, I'm doing everything else that I do. Do I have time? I do not, but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, Joe. I mean, I, I'm a former teacher too. And my, my, one of my roommates when I was a teacher was a kindergarten teacher and I was teaching second grade. And I got to tell you, kindergarten teachers are saints. If, if anyone's in the comment section, if you're a kindergarten teacher, thank you for everything you're doing. Let me you're, just say this. We're saints in yeah. the classroom. <laughs> we're ladies in the streets, but we're freaks in the sheets. Let me tell you. <laughs> We are not to be played with us kindergarten teachers. Do not mess with the kindergarten teacher's scorn, honey. Absolutely. Oh, it is a special soul that teaches kindergarten. I've taught everything. And I, I just, I'm not a kindergarten teacher. So I really bow down to kindergarten teachers. But definitely kindergarten teachers get the funniest, rawest, like, like elements of children, which I think is so awesome. And like your YouTube channel it really has some great moments. So yeah, so I might like, I don't have to sell Joe because Joe sells himself, he's hilarious. But if you have not checked out Joe Dombrowski and like just Google him and find his YouTube channel, you're missing out. So um, we can tell definitely that you are a 
crazy passionate educator. Like, uh, and that's what's so much fun about watching you too, because not only do you all the, do all this crazy awesome stuff on social media, but like, it's so obvious that you really love what you do. So what do you love most about teaching? Oh gosh. I think that, I, I think like young life just kind of invigorates you and reminds you of being carefree and living without inhibitions and being a risk taker and something in our adult life sort of changes that about us as people and we don't take risks like we used to and we're scared of a lot but when I look into my classroom and I watch my students just do things because they want to and do things because they are able to it like strikes me to be a better person and to live my life to the fullest. And, and a lot of professions don't have uh, the ability to be introspective like that and to reconnect with their younger selves. And although my kindergartners are aging me at the rate of milk that's been left out on the counter, they are, they are keeping me young at the same time because I just am so, they're five and they inspire me more than anybody. And it's really, it's cool. So uh, that's really why I do it, um, you know, just to be, that's why I wanted to do it. But then once you realize that as an educator, you really truly have an opportunity to shift the way that the world is going, it, it's, it's an unbelievable opportunity that only the most fortunate are able to to have and it's a privilege to be an educator and and it's it's beautiful that's beautiful it's insane but it's beautiful it, absolutely and i have to say i mean you're obviously doing amazing work preparing the next generation um for whatever comes their way but also you have a lot of fun in your classroom and i, I actually wanted to take it all the way back to the beginning of your journey with the spelling bee prank video which yeah. oh, you haven't seen this yet like stop now go look at it and come back but like it's like you need to like watch it after the live stream is my point. It's an amazing video. I actually saw it long before I met you and did, we're working on this right now. What inspired you to record this video? I've always wondered what kind of was the origin story of it and what was it like to share it and then have it? All right, going through the list with the spelling. We're checking your own list here. We okay, hold on. I have to. So you show the video, Tanya. You should. Yeah, I, I have to. Just a little bit of it because it's so funny. And Tanya, it's so funny too that you keep going back to YouTube. YouTube is actually my smallest following. That's where my <laughs> least amount of fans are. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. We're gonna talk about you as a creator in a moment. Okay. Um, and, and and it just pops up quickly, right? Because of SEO. So that's probably why I clicked on it first. But all right, have a check. We won't watch the whole thing, but just let's let's have a look at this. We go. The first word was Blorsky. I lost my Blorsky at a carnival. B L O R S K E E. E E. The next word was tangentine. I eat my spaghetti with a tangentine. <laughs> that it's T A N G E T E E N. Tangentine. <laughs> the next word is spiku. Look, there's a spiku. S P E E K. U Z S L M N. There's silent letters at the end of that one. <laughs> yep. Speak who? S P E E K U Z S L M N. What? Yep. And it's not, nope, it's actually from a, somewhere else, not here. The next word was. That's where I almost started <laughs> laughing. That's the part I ended up with you. W A Z A M A T A. Was the matter? Was the matter? Was the matter? The next word is slippert. Be careful when you're sleeping. There might be a slippert in your house. Slippert. S L I P E R T. Slippert. Nice. The next word is. Reactions, though. Was angry, so I said. Ch -ch -ch. That's C H C H C H. Nice. Nice work. The last word is Rolaskatox. Rolaskatox was surprised when Jinx took the crown. That's R O L hyphen. What? A S K A hyphen T O X. I didn't even know what that is. Sorry, you got that word wrong. The word is Rolaskatox. All right. I'll okay. stop there. But this is so funny. I didn't just watch it and I think this is only it's so hilarious. Yeah, well, that's okay. So that is the 
the first viral video. I'll say that's the one that sort of put me on the map. But the origin story, Emily, um, so I don't know if you know this, but all teachers are, um, what's the word? Uh, poor. <laughs> so as a teacher, especially like in your first couple years, it's, you have to work a second job. I remember I got my first, my very first paycheck. And I showed it to my mom and I said, I think something's wrong with this. And she just laughed. And I was like, oh my God. And then like, I was on my own and you get your first couple paychecks and they're gone that day because you have to pay your bills. And it's like, there were literally days where I was like, I don't think I'm going to have enough money to bring lunch to this job, you know? Oh. So, so many teachers work second and third jobs. So I actually had three. I was a fourth grade teacher, a spin instructor and a stand-up comedian. So right before I started getting in, right before I started teaching professionally, I was dabbling in comedy and really enjoying it. And I sort of worked up a little bit of a reputation where I could do it, you know, for $20 spots, $50 spots, $100 was like a lot um, on the weekends. And I was just doing it, doing it, doing it uh, and loving it. And then I started just like, experimenting with talking about classroom stuff and I realized that like that was really really working so what I would do is is I would get an idea for a joke that I would want to write and I would take a short video of it happening in my classroom for real and then I was posting it just to my personal Facebook page I didn't really have a lot of social media at this time or like that and I was really just posting it to my like my friends and my family that's it and if it stuck and I was getting a lot of like comments or whatever on it, I was like, oh, this one might be worth developing to something else. Well, a lot of comments was like 10 at max, right? <laughs> so then I post this one and this one had 20 million views overnight. And I was like, what is happening here? So 20 million views overnight. The kids are freaking out. The parents are freaking out. And then like three days later, a call from the Ellen DeGeneres show to come on the show. So just kind of giving you the bullet points here, but went on the show a month later, went back again. And uh, she was like, they, they really didn't want to like talk about me as a comedian. They really wanted to keep it teacher focused, which I was like, sure, whatever. Nobody gets this opportunity. I don't care. But in a moment when there was no cameras on us, Ellen turned to me and she's like, I heard you're a comedian as well. And I was like, yeah. She's like, well, I want to let you know you're very funny. I was like, oh, well, thank you. She's like, no, I, you're very funny. Um, you need to do something with that. And then like the cameras were back on and we were back on the air. And I was like, oh my God. So I have that written uh, almost immediately. I wrote that down and I have it like written above my desk and I look at it like every single day. And I knew from that moment that like, this person who in comedy I have ins inspired me and I've looked up to for so long just told you to like live your dream and go for it. And I was like, how cool of an opportunity that I'm like doing both of my passions that I really love. And I talk and I preach every day to my students to chase your dreams and don't let people tell you no and don't do it. And here I am as a teacher and everyone's like, you can't be a teacher and a, and a comedian. It'll never work. Like it's not going to do it. And then she just sort of like lit that fire under me and I doubled down and I just started making more videos about the funny things that happened in, in teaching elementary school. And they were just hitting and hitting and hitting. And I built over time this like astronomical audience that allowed me to like live my dream and really survive as a comedian. So right before the pandemic, I was actually on tour in the US, Canada and Australia. And I remember when I was in Australia, I was just looking around. I was like, I cannot believe, I cannot believe you're doing this. Like it was just so humbling and surreal. And it's all because I'm living my truth. Like I'm just being myself on the internet and like doing what I find funny. And the thing with social media um, that I, all the kids want to be a social media star. Like they all want to do it. Like everyone wants to be a TikTok star. Everyone wants to do this. And it, my students are not, in any way different than anybody else's but they always see me doing it and they think they can so they're always like how do we do this like how do i how do i get this how do i get the followers how do i do it and i go be yourself do your own thing look what everyone else is doing and do the opposite be, <laughs> be inspiring be creative but just do 
be you. Don't try to be them, be you and it will work. And that's just exactly what I do. I'm like living proof that that is true. Um, and I love every minute of my life. Yeah. Oh, I love this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. What a, what a crazy journey you've been on. That's incredible. What a great story. Super crazy. So, um, oh, there's so many, so many questions. I'm totally going off. Yeah, here. go for it. <laughs> but like, so you are on like a lot of different social media. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, and I, and I, I was I like, all of them except for Snapchat. Snapchat got a little seedy once I got mm-hmm. like there, like to a certain level. It was just, I was like, oh, I'm done with this. <laughs> but, yeah, every, every other one I'm on. That's really cool. And are you always Mr. D times three? Yep. Same okay. handle, everything. That's really cool. So, I, you know, I know you teach kindergarten. What are some of the other grades you've taught? I'm just out of curiosity. I've actually taught everything from third grade to sixth grade um, and kindergarten. So the only thing I haven't taught that I'm certified to teach is first and second. Okay. So I'm kind of curious because like you were, I mean, clearly you were teaching older students, not kindergarten when like that whole kind of like spelling the prank went down, right? Mm-hmm. That was- Yeah, I was teaching fourth grade. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of curious because like, you know, Emily and I live in like, so I'm a former, I'm a teacher. Mm-hmm. I, I'm two years out of the classroom and I miss it terribly. Um, and so we're always thinking about skills, right? Like in our role as, you know, um, educators, you know, for a big company that really focuses around creative literacy and teaching around creativity, we're always, you know, we're, we speak a lot to teachers about the importance of these skills that we need to teach these kids because ultimately like this is a world they live in. Like you're like, you're living your truth. You're living your world, but like, you're also living in a space where like you have made your, 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 your world and your name through understanding how to leverage creative tools, social media, how to harness the power of social media and how to really kind of like take that, that, that opportunity and really like run with it. Cause you could have gone on to Ellen and then like done nothing with that, but right. you, you took the opportunity, you opened the door and you walked through it and you changed your life. But there are probably a ton of skills that were attached to that that you were learning along the way. So I'm kind of curious, like, where do those skills fit in for you? Like, what have you learned through that journey? And how has that changed the way that you approach your teaching with kids and how you view? Oh, my God. I love this question. I have never been asked this. I've never I've never been asked this in an interview before. And I, I wish that I was asked this in every interview. Okay. So the number one thing, like just talking about social media, the number one thing that I learned is like, don't be precious with it. Like, don't, 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 you, you see something that you like, like you see a bit of content that you're like really engaged in and that you really like, and you want to make something like it, but you don't have the skills, but that's all materialism. Like it's all not real. Right. Mm -hmm. I go back and look at my very early videos. Okay. The spelling test being one of them. Right. I had my phone and a coffee cup. I leaned my phone onto a coffee cup. I had my disgusting classroom lights on. Like, that's it. And I just pressed play and pressed upload. That's it. And it got 20 million views. It's it's my number one video to date. Um, And and I look back at that and then I look at like my other videos where I was trying to get them to look like what I wanted them to aesthetically be like. And they were, if, you, if I watched them now, I would say these are horrible, but the views were incredible and the comments were incredible. And the bottom line is, if you're making something and it's good, it will shine. It doesn't all, everything, people are like, I need a ring light and I don't have the right editing software and I don't have enough money to get, no, you don't, a new camera. You don't need that. You literally don't need that. It just needs to be good. That's it. Good quality speaks for, a good content speaks for itself. So when I put that into play into my classroom, I see online these Mary Poppins teachers who are just like turning my room into an actual rainforest and there's like real (laughs) moths growing and like real orchids. And I'm like, oh my God, I can never do that. Guess what? You don't have to, because if you do even one 
17th of the effort that that teacher did, your students are going to love it just as much, if not more. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab some safety scissors and green paper, and I'm going to turn this room into the jungle for 25 cents, okay? And they're going to never know the difference, and they're going to love it just as much. The, if you make it, if you sell it, if you sell it with all of your heart, the kids are going to buy it. And so are your followers. That's just the bottom line. Like, don't be too precious about it. And I just called out a lot of people, but at least I didn't say <laughs> your name. <laughs> I, I have a, I'm from Detroit, so I have a little bit of a chip. So I love, it comes out. It. I love it. I love And I love your passion. And you're so, so spot on. Like, there's an authenticity to what you did. There's an authenticity to what you do. And, you know, you're speaking that truth. Like, don't be afraid to, to just go and do. And I think even yeah. with our students, you know, there's the teacher piece and then there's the kid piece. Like they, a lot of students now see all these social media influencers. They see this like world that's like turned on click it's on and, and it's the 18th take and it's the 50th photo that the person has chosen. And there's this filter that has been put on to the reality for so many of our kids. And I think that that's also such an important, um, that's such an important lesson for them to learn from, from what, what's happened with you. And also in general, just like iterate, like go do and, and learn. And I think that that's kind of like what we need to be doing in education in general, just like, having kids go try something, take a risk, create something. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time, put their, their work out there, get feedback, learn from it, do it again, do it again, do it again. And so I love that. And I love that you said that because I think that that's so important for kids and for teachers to encourage their students to be able to do. So I love this interview so much, Joe. I do so, like so like, listen to this too. Like the one thing that I see is like when I compare social media and like being a teacher and social media in the classroom, mm -hmm. it's like the same thing. So you have a lot of teachers on social media, right? But like their, their followings like cap at a certain point. And at a certain point in my like social media journey, I realized that I was like trying to fit in and like doing kind of what they did and like talking like they talk and saying that. And I'm like, this just feels so wrong. It's not me. I swear the day I was like, be yourself was the day it went like even, even higher. And I, I'm a little bit of, I'm like, I'm not for everybody and that's okay. I have a little bit of an edge. I'm going to like tell you like it is in education. I'm going to tell you the funny things when other people might think it's inappropriate. And I'm going to tell you that this job is like really, really hard and it's not for everybody. And if you are a teacher right now and you're feeling like you're burning out, you probably are. And it's okay to take some time off. I'm going to say these things, right? When I started saying these things, everything was on the up and up. And it's the same for our kids too. Who are the kids that you remember the most? The kids who were different from the rest of the pack, the kids who dared to be themselves, the kids who took the risk the highest and it just like overcame all of that. And it, it's so weird how these two things come full circle and work together, but like they do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what it really comes to mind also is it sounds like it's about you and being who you are, but it's also about using what you have available to you. So like, yeah, don't be precious with it. But like, if you've got tools available, if you've got scissors and paper, you're going to use scissors and paper. You know, if you've got a phone and a cup, you're going to use the phone and the cup. So figuring out how to use our tools to tell our story, but it's not about the tools. It's about the story, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. All right, so I have to bring it back a little bit. <laughs> okay, and this is kind of the create portion of our show. Uh, you know, I mentioned we kind of do like define, create, reflect. And this might be, but don't tell the other guests, one of my favorite guests. <laughs> <laughs> so this is such a great show. But, okay, so I've been watching you on, um, on social with some of the stuff that you've been doing with Adobe, which has been so much fun to watch and participate in. And um, I know that you've been, you know, either you've learned about some of our great tools, you've known about some of our great tools, or you've learned just most recently about some of our great tools. Because, I mean, let's be real, Joe, we have a lot of really awesome tools and there's a lot of them, and which makes it so cool. And also like, like what can be super overwhelming? So I would love to learn from you, like what are some of the tools or some of the free tools or some of the tools in general that you learned about that you're like, wait, what? So, okay, go. Yeah, I, th I, th I was like trying to 
to, I, I was speaking a concept into existence of what I wanted to do, which is when I was really approached by Adobe and you guys were like, oh, we already have something like that. It's called Character Animator. And I was like, listen, I don't know what it is, but I know that I'm going to figure it out. And the truth of the matter is, is so Character Animator, if you don't know, yeah, it's, uh, you can make any character come to life by using your actual face. I, it's like movie magic for the everyday user, which is pretty, pretty incredible. So simplest, so seamless, so user-friendly, so easy to go. I think in 15 minutes, I created a, the world, but she's a woman and I used it and I narrated it and I made the world talk to do an intro for, um, Earth Day for my students because my students have been obsessed with Mother Nature recently because I told them they weren't recycling a lot. So I call our uh, recycle bin Mother Nature's mailbox. So the intro to Earth Day was Mother Nature coming to life and saying hello to my class um, and addressing them by name and saying uh, the little things that like Mother Nature wouldn't really know about them, but oh my gosh, she knows. And it took me 15 minutes like it was really incredible so it comes down to also uh trusting yourself and knowing that like you can figure things out if you just take a little bit of time and the fact of the matter is with mostly everything these days if you don't know how to do something type in how to whatever you're trying to do into youtube and there will be a youtube video for you Character Animator has tons of both Adobe produced how-to videos about Character Animator, but also just general users from all over the world. So if there's like one specific thing, like you want to change the hair on a character, just type in how to change character hair, at Character Animator, and I guarantee something will pop up. Um, and it's just a really great way to amp up what you're already doing in the classroom to just continue to uh engage the students oh, absolutely oh yeah. totally 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 and there are so many uh, amazing resources that are available um on uh both edX um like lesson plans lesson ideas for teachers um a whole slew of them they're like really good and also if you go to the uh, help x if you just google help x on adobe.com just put it in the and the on in your Omni box. There are the most amazing getting started resources there, and it's one of those resources that is so underutilized. I think in EDU, mm -hmm. and it is so good. And so uh, that's another really great piece. I'll put it in the banner. But yeah, Joe, you're so spot on. Like YouTube, you know, the HelpX on Adobe, um, the edX. There's so many great things, and I love that you love character animator. It was so cute. Oh, I love it. I'm obsessed. For the first time, he was like, "What?" So, it's great. Um, and don't forget the community, right? I mean, the we're on obviously Adobe Creative Educator live stream, but often community members are some of the best resources. So don't be afraid to like talk in the Facebook groups and ask your fellow educators about it. Chances are somebody is online who's worked on Character Animator. Oh, yeah. Yes. Totally. And in our um, Adobe Creative Educator Facebook group, once you join ACE, there are some really awesome, like, educators in there that are doing, like, mental work with Character Animator with their students, like, um, third graders that are, like, have, you know, have, they're having their students creating, like, these really great characters. And also, like, you know, when you think about social-emotional learning, Joe, like, that's another great tool to, like, have kids that maybe like mm -hmm. you know you know if you think about kids who might be on the spectrum or like who struggle socially you know you know, making content this is such a great tool to have kids be able to kind of like get out of their comfort zone and like be able to really communicate and articulate their thoughts in a really creative way so there's definitely something for everyone um <laughs> yeah, i like to think of it i like to think of it as um a public speaking, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like a, it can be a public speaking simulator for kids. Mm -hmm. So yeah. kids who are like really shy or uncomfortable with that, they can use this character to like simulate what they might actually be like, which will prove to them that it's not as scary as you might think it is, which can lead to even greater things. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, how do teachers, you know, Emily works on the product marketing side. So like, I always love to have Emily when she's here. So 
And we had a teacher's access character animator because, you know, we have Spark, of course, which is like totally free and always available. And then we have our Creative Cloud app. So how does that work for schools? Totally. It's a question we get all the time and it's a good one. So we actually have an option for educators um, and for schools and districts uh, in a lot of different places in the U.S. and Europe, et cetera, where you can actually get the entire Creative Cloud suite, all of the apps for $5 per user per year in K-12 education. It's super great. It's a huge discount. Um, and there's basically all you have to do is talk to your IT administrators, your administrators. They can buy it for your school or your district. Um, and included in that bundle of Creative Cloud apps, there are 22 apps and services in there. And Character Animator is just one of those. So it's it's really great. I highly recommend people check it out. Um, and of course, also Adobe Spark for Education is another great tool we have. That's always free for schools and districts to use. Um, and a lot of powerful stuff is in there too. So a lot of good options if folks are interested. Uh, absolutely. All right. So we're at the end, which makes me sad because shh, don't tell the others. Joe's my favorite guest. But don't shh. I'm going to be in big trouble. <laughs> don't tell anybody. Okay. So I'm sad to have the show end. This has been so much fun. But we want to leave you, as you know, you know, as we always say, we go through define, create, and reflect. And so we're going to leave you with a reflection question that we would love for you to add your response inside of the comment section, tweet it, you know, using a hashtag Adobe EDU creative, whatever it is. So um, I'm actually going to let Emily um, share our reflection question. So go for it. Yeah. So the reflection question this week is, what was the beginning of your journey as a creator and as a teacher? And how do you want those to come together? Awesome. So we're excited to hear from you, share a little bit in the chat. Um, and uh, we're super thrilled that you all came today. As Joe mentioned, um, you know, educators are probably our, uh, and as a fellow educator, I know how often we are kind of overlooked, underappreciated, overworked. Um, and then here you are on your own free time, coming here and we have the same people that join us every week um, from all over the world. Joe, it's incredible. We have people that join us from South Africa, from India, um, from Morocco, and they come every single week. So you are all so amazing. We see you, we appreciate you. We are so honored to be part of this community with you. So thank you for the work you do every day. Joe, thank you so much for coming on. You're amazing. I'm now your biggest fan. So I will continue. Well, my mom's got that spot on lock, so you got to fight her for it. You're right. But I will, <laughs> you're so right. But I will definitely continue to um, stalk you on social media <laughs> and die and send all of your things to all my teacher friends from ever and ever right now. Um, but thank you for joining, for sharing your story for inspiring so many people to be creators, to take creative risks, to just put themselves out there. What a great, like great story and a great message. And uh, we're so thrilled that you were able to join us. And thank you, Emily, for stepping in today and joining us on the show. And uh, we will see you all next week. So thanks everybody. Bye. Thanks, everyone. thanks for having me.